Hello, and welcome to the instructional video for the Viking Sapphire 960Q. We are going to spend about an hour and we're going to go through the entire machine from threading to working the touchscreen to the entire operation of the machine. So I do hope that you enjoy this video and it gets you the knowledge you need to run your new Viking Sapphire. Okay, let's start by pointing out some of the obvious features on this machine. First, you'll notice that it is a long arm sewing machine, so it's much longer than your standard machine. It is 10 inches from the needle to the inside of the arm of the machine. It is also very well lit. It has banks of lighting both here, here, and here. And yes, they are LED lights, so that means you will not have to change a light bulb for at least 20 years. Also, it has a high definition color touchscreen. The stylus holder has been put on the side of the machine so that you can navigate through your screen right here. I do recommend using this stylus, but you can use your finger. If you're going to use your finger, I would recommend using your fingernail and maybe not the, the greasy part of your finger. It'll just help keep the, the smudges off the screen, but the stylus is the best scenario which lives right on the side there. It does have Viking's exclusive sewing advisor built into it, and I'll explain a little bit more about that later, but it's where you can tell the machine that uh, what kind of fabric you're sewing with and what you want to do with that fabric, and the machine will uh, set itself up and, and change some of the adjustments. It is electronically controlled tension, so there is no big tension dial on the front of the machine. The electronics are controlling it all for you. It also has Viking's exclusive sensor system, which means that as you are sewing, the machine senses the thickness of the fabric and will adjust the foot pressure to climb over seams easier and to sew through that bulky fabric um, without any difficulty. With that sensor system, and I'll explain a little bit more about this in a few minutes, um, you do not have the lifter lever and back. It all operates with the use of buttons. Also, the feed dog drop is automatic. There is no lever there. The machine knows when to drop it when you're doing free motion quilting or other techniques. Um, so you don't have to click that hard to move lever back and forth. It's also drop and bobbin machine. It has a built in needle threader here. So there's lots of wonderful features built onto this bike. First, let's start by threading the sewing machine. The sewing machine threads very easy. It's got a very clear path to follow. Um, so I'll show you how this is done. We are going to thread the upper thread first and then I'll show you how to wind the bobbin. Um, that is because you can wind the bobbin from the needle without having to unthread your sewing machine while you're, sh where, while you're sewing and I'll show you that. Um, let's talk a second about the spool of thread on the spool pin. You'll notice that it is in the horizontal position, not the vertical position. This machine will allow you to use it both ways. The reason why most machines now use it in the horizontal position is because when it's standing up vertical, the spool of thread has to rotate when it's forming a stitch. When it is in the horizontal, the thread just falls off the end without having to rotate the spool. The rotation of the spool and the weight of the spool will affect the tensions. So you get the most consistent tensions having the spool of thread in the horizontal position. Now on the machine, you do have these spool caps that live on the spool pin. You get a set of spool caps. You get two larges, a medium, and a small. And you also get these little felt pads. So what should go on your spool pin first is a large spool cap and your felt pad. Now I usually instruct people to put it on there and forget about it. That's going to live there forever. The reason why you want that there is because when you are using the spool in the um, vertical position, it gives it something to rest on and it also gives it that felt pad to help the spool spin smooth and even. So first we put on our spool of thread and you can use any kind of thread. I use these large Mettler threads here in my store because we go through a lot of thread here. Um, but any kind, you put it on the spool pin, you want the thread to be coming off from the top so that when you hold the thread down in front it looks like a waterfall. You also match the spool cap on the other end of the spool 
based on the spool you have. So if you have a medium sized spool, you put this medium one on, a large one, you put the large one on. In this case, the end of this is very small, so we're gonna use the small spool cap kind of turned around backwards. From your spool of thread, you're gonna go under this first metal thread guide. This is a pre-tensioner. This is what takes all the twist out of the thread before it goes into the tension assembly. To do this, you just slide it right underneath the long piece of metal, and then you start to follow the groove of the machine. Do not go into this. This is for winding the bobbin, so just ignore this. So you come up and around, down the front. There is two sides to the tension assembly. There's a left side and a right side. It does not matter what side you go in. Just let it fall wherever it, it goes. Straight down the front of the machine. When you get down here at the bottom, you just bring the thread around and you come way back up to the top. When you get to the top, there's a little metal lever inside of here that'll move up and down when the machine sews. This is called the take-up lever. It's very important that you get your thread pulled completely into the take-up lever. If you are ever sewing and you do not have your thread in the take-up lever, all your thread is going to gather in your bobbin area. So this is very important that you make sure that you can see the thread locked into the front of that take-up lever. This take-up lever has been redesigned over the years, so it has a locking mechanism to it. So when the thread goes into it, it cannot come out. So just make sure you click it in all the way. So from here, we go down the front of the machine until you come to the needle clamp. So there's a little wire guide right on the needle clamp itself. Now, how I tell people to go in there is to hold the thread like you're gonna floss your teeth, so like this, and you just click it behind that wire there. It's, it's easier than it looks. You do have the use of your needle threader. The way you're gonna use your needle threader is you're gonna hold the thread a little bit off to the side, bring the needle threader down, and this first hook will grab the thread you push the needle threader all the way forward, which will push a little wire through the eye of the needle. Take your needle thread, stretch it over, and there's a little slot here in the needle threader itself that you pull the thread into, and a little hook will grab the thread and will pull it through the back of the needle, so you'll get that loop. Then you just grab the loop and you pull the thread through the rest of the way, which I have a very long tail, which I don't normally do. And then you've got your little side cutter right on the side. So that is how you thread the upper part of the machine. Now we are going to wind the bobbin. But notice I threaded the machine first. It's because when you're sewing on a Viking sewing machine, you can rewind your bobbin right from your needle thread. So when you're sewing and you run out of thread, you don't have to pull all the thread out of the machine and rewind up here. You can just take the needle thread and pull it over, and I'll show you. So one thing that you wanna make sure is that the presser foot is in the up position. That is because when the presser foot is up, the tension is nice and loose and released off the thread, so it'll pull through really easy like it, like it needs to. So from your needle, you're going to go to this guide right here. The thread will stretch across two little metal pieces here, and what that does is it keeps the thread from cutting into the machine as you're winding your bobbin. Now the bobbin goes on the bobbin winder right on the very top of the machine. Now these are special bobbins, which means that they only will fit on the bobbin winder the proper way. You cannot put it on upside down, it won't fit. Also, it'll only fit in the bobbin area the proper way. If you try to put it in upside down, it just simply won't fit inside. So it makes sure that you always have your thread the proper way, so it kind of takes all the, the guesswork out. So there's a couple different ways that you can do it. They've added a hole on the top of the bobbin, and this is my preferred method, is to stick the thread right through that hole. Now you also can wrap the thread around the bobbin. There's little tiny grippers on the inside of the bobbin. So once you put the bobbin on the bobbin winder, you push it over to the side. On the screen will come a little speed adjustment to adjust how fast or how slow you would like to wind your bobbin. I kind of usually put it at a medium speed, medium fast, and then a play stop button. So as soon as you hit the play, the bobbin will start winding. A 
and we'll just let this bobbin fill up completely. And when the bobbin is full, we just hit stop on the screen, take the bobbin off, there's a little cutter next to the bobbin, and you have your full bobbin. Easy. Now there's another way that we can wind our bobbin when you do not want to do it from your needle, and that would be from the top of the machine. So I'm just going to quickly explain how this works. You can put a spool of thread here on your secondary spool pin, right here, and then you go to this little round button guide, and then you go to this guide right to your bobbin winder. So spool of thread, round button guide, guide, bobbin winder. So that is when you are not doing it from the needle. Otherwise, you don't use this button guide. That's, this is the only time that you use this little button guide. Now I'm going to show you how to load your bobbin into the bobbin case. This is very easy. So like I said earlier, the bobbin only will fit in the proper way, which is with the Husqvarna Viking symbol facing up. So when you drop the bobbin in, next you have to pull it, the thread and click it under the, that little piece of metal at the base of the bobbin case. I like to put one finger on the bobbin to keep it from turning, that way I can pull the thread tightly. And you'll hear a small click when it seats into that little piece of metal there. Now from here, you bring it to this guide here, and then to this little razor blade right at the base of the shuttle assembly, and that cuts off the tail from the bobbin. The reason why it does that is you do not have to rotate the hand wheel and pick up your bobbin thread like you would on an older machine. It cut the tail at the proper length to pick it up on the first stitch and start sewing. And then you put on your bobbin cover, and that's it. We just threaded the machine. Now I want to explain what some of the front buttons on the machine does and then we'll go over and play on the screen itself. So we've got a series of buttons here. We have your needle up down button. We have our thread cutter button. So the needle up down button does exactly what you think it does. It puts the needle in the fabric when you stop sewing or the needle will stop in the up position when you stop sewing. The light indicates where it's set currently. You have the automatic thread cut button, so when you stop sewing, you hit that button and it cuts your, your threads. Your speed, you can turn the speed up and down on the machine to put it at a comfortable pace for your sewing. You have the stop button, which I'll explain a little bit better in detail in a few minutes. Um, the stop is works a couple different ways, um, but the most commonly used is it will complete one pattern and then stop for you or you can use it in programming when you're doing a name. You can program it to just do the name and stop. And I'll show you that. Fix is a automatic locking feature. So when you touch the fix, you'll get a lock at the beginning or the end of your stitch without having to hold the reverse button down. The start stop button, um, I'll explain a little bit more about that in a second. The stop start is sewing without your full control. So you can hit the button and the machine will start sewing. Reverse is just what you think. Um, you hold it down when you want to reverse. If you touch the reverse button while you're not sewing, it'll put it into permanent reverse. So it'll only reverse until you hit the button and make it come back forward. And the little LED light next to it indicates where it's set. Then you have the presser foot up down button. So let me back up the screen a little bit and I will show you how some of these buttons work. Okay, first I'm going to show you how the needle up down button works. It's one of my favorite features on the machine and people who buy these machines really appreciate this feature. So when you start sewing, the needle always stops in the up position. Now if I have my needle down button selected, the needle will always stop in the fabric, but what it also does is it slightly raises the foot. This is so that you can turn corners easy. Um, if you're quilting and you're chain piecing, you can sew up. Now slip in your next piece and start sewing again. Um, so the needle up down feature on the Viking sewing machine um, is a really nice selling point for the machine. Another thing I want to show you is that when you don't have the needle up down selected, you also have the ability to give your foot control a short tap. 
and that short tap will also make the needle go in the down position. So I'm sewing normal, which is needle up, and then if I give my foot control a quick tap, it sticks the needle down and it raises a foot. I actually use this more than I use the actual button. Because a lot of times when I'm sewing and I just want to turn a quick corner, I can just give it a nice little tap. Okay, so the next button right there, the thread cutter button. So when it cuts, it automatically raises the foot every single time. So you start sewing, hit the cut, cut, and it raises the foot. Automatic thread cutters are great. Okay, the speed button's here. So the machine's very fast. At full speed, it, it goes at a pretty quick pace. So if that's a little too fast for you, you can slow it down, and when you slow it down, you'll see a little slider on the screen, which will show you kind of where you're at with your speed. So if I go all the way down to the very bottom and start sewing, it's, that's the fastest the machine will go. Now this is nice also when you're using the start stop button. So you can set the speed and not have the machine race off on you. One thing I want to point out about the start stop button, which I really appreciate, is that our start st start stop button works a little different than other brands of machine start stop button. Pretty much every other machine, every machine on the market um, has a, a start stop button that works where you have to unplug the foot control first in order to use the start stop button. If you do not unplug the foot control, it'll just beep at you and it won't let you sew. Now, the way Viking works on their start stop button is it works with the foot control, which I appreciate. So you don't have to unplug the foot control. So if you start sewing with the start stop button, anytime I touch the foot control, the foot control immediately takes back over. Which is great because if you're doing like free motion quilting, you can set the speed where you want to get your stitches really consistent, you can use the start stop button to start your free motion, and then when you touch the foot control, it'll stop it for you. So it gives you really, really nice control that way. Okay, so then we have the stop button. Um, the stop button, um, we'll do that in, a, in, in just a little bit when we're doing some pattern stitches, but if you were doing like a little train um, and you touch the stop button, it would finish the train before it stopped sewing. It would finish the pattern you're on, it would lock the stitch, and then it would stop. Now the fix button, anytime I touch fix, the first thing it does is it locks the stitch automatically for me. When I get to the end of a seam and I touch the fix, it'll lock the end of the machine. So it's instead of reversing. Also as a little side note too, anytime you're sewing, and you touch the thread cutter button as you are actively sewing, it'll always knot for you. So it'll always do a fix for you, then cut and raise the foot. Also, if you are sewing a pattern, so if you're sewing a name, say it said, you know, making a quilt label made with love for so-and-so, and you're sewing that out and you hit this scissor button as you're sewing, it'll wait till that name is finished. It'll lock, then it'll cut, and then it'll raise the foot. So the scissor button is very smart. If you're not sewing, so if you just sew to the edge and you stop and you hit the cut button, it won't fix, it'll just simply cut and raise the foot for you automatically. So that's a couple different ways that the cut button works that I really appreciate, really like that. Um, okay, so let's talk about the presser foot up and down buttons because it's important to know how to work these buttons. Um, and it's pretty simple. The thing to know is that each button has two touches. So you have the down button, which brings the foot down, just like you think. You hit the down button a second time, and the foot just slightly hovers above the fabric, just a tiny, tiny amount. And why this is nice is when you have a machine that had a presser foot lifter lever here, and you're trying to get the needle just where you want to start sewing, you might raise and lower that lever, right, to get the needle right where you want to start sewing. Instead, you just touch the down button, make the foot hover above the fabric, put the needle right where you want to start sewing, and then you can just hit the foot control, the foot will drop down, and you start sewing. Easy. Now, you also have an up button, which will bring the foot up. Now, if I touch the up button a second time, 
it goes to a really extra high position where you can get that really bulky fabric in there. But what it also did is it lowered the feed teeth for me automatically. So if I am trying to get some bulk underneath there, it won't hang up on the feed teeth, which are quite sharp. So that's how the buttons work. Now one thing I want to point out too um, that I've discovered over the years of doing this, there's some machines in the industry now that kind of boast an automatic foot and, and the use of buttons, but I got to tell you they're very different. Um, Viking has had the patent on this for a long time now. They own the, pat the patent. Other brands have had to do workarounds to try to make it look similar. And I know because I sell multiple brands of machines. This isn't the only brand I sell. Um, but Viking is very dear to me. Um, I really like the machines. They're one of my favorite brands. But theirs is by far the easiest setup here. Other machines, if you ever get a demo on a different brand machine, you'll notice before they can have the foot lift or before they can do different things, they have to program it on the screen first. So they're always programming it here and then making it look like it's, it's doing it like the Viking does it. Does not work that way. The nice thing with the Viking is that anytime you hit the foot control, the presser foot drops down automatically. That does not work that way on other brands of machines without programming first. Anytime you hit the thread cutter, it always cuts and raises the foot without having to hit any other button. The needle up down, you don't have to hit any other button or do any other programming to get that feature to work. So it's very, very nice, very easy. The automatic foot, the needle up down, the pivot, those are some of my absolute favorite features on a machine. Um, I have that on my machine at home and I couldn't imagine not having that when I sew. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the navigation of the touch screen. Um, it's a really well designed, easy to use screen. A couple things that I like, um, I like that it shows you the stitch and actual size on the screen. It always tells you the recommended foot and has a nice picture showing the foot. Now over here on the side it tells you needle recommendation, what your fabric selection is set to. It also has your tension settings for the machine. Like I said, they are electronically controlled tensions, so you do not need to adjust them, but if you wanted to make some tweaks here and there, um, you could do that here. Anytime you change them, you'll notice the letters turn red or the numbers turn red. Kind of tells you that you're, that you're outside of the normal range. But you don't have to be concerned because when you do change the tensions, it's temporary, so you're not changing the machine overall. So feel free to fool around if you, if you need to. Um, this right here, this button, is our free motion button. And we'll do free motion a little bit. That makes it really easy. You just tell the machine that you want a free motion, kind of sets up the rest for you. So real simple. Um, down here we got our length and our width settings. We can adjust them here. Now, this one is our width for when we're doing a zigzag stitch. Um, but when you're doing a straight stitch, it then acts as needle positions. And you'll notice that as I move the needle left to right, you see it actually move on the screen. So everything that you see on the screen is real sizing and real positions. And then your st stitch length is the one right next to it. The longest stitch length that the machine will do is 6.0, which is a very long stitch length for a home sewing machine. It's the longest in the industry. Most other brands of machines will do um, five tops. Some of them even do four and a half. So it's a nice long stitch length there. Um, this is a pattern restart button. So if you're working on a pattern, it'll take you right back to the beginning of the pattern. Now over here, you got a little toggle to where our sewing stitches are. So these sewing stitches here are in our A menu, our utility menu. Now you'll notice, it's kind of hard to see on the camera, but there's a little triangle in the corner on this icon. Anytime you see a little triangle in the corner of an icon on, on a Viking sewing machine, it means if you hold the icon down, a menu will pop up. Here is all of the menus of the different sewing stitches that the machine does. And they're all broken up into categories. So these are all satin stitches here. These are big omni motion stitches and I'll show you those in a second. And you'll notice um, I keep touching the one button and it keeps changing. It's because 
In the G menu, there is different pages. Same thing with the A, and you'll see the little dot change to the different pages. So there is quite a nice selection of stitching in there. This is our quilting menu here. And then our heart menu, which we have one, somebody was playing, we have one thing in our heart menu, and I'll show you what that is. That's our, our personal stitches, anything we wanna save or, or anything that maybe we've tweaked around um, would go in there. Now when you touch this little crystal, that brings you to, one, it'll bring you back right to your sewing stitches, just like it did if we held down this button here. Um, this brings us to our alphabets, all of our built-in alphabets the machine does. Um, programming is also in that little crystal. And programming is when you combine two different stitches together, and I'll show you that in a second. Um, our file folder is where we can save things that we've made or done into our machine's memory. And the screwdriver and wrench, that is all of the machine settings. So if you don't want the presser foot to automatically lift when you have needle down, you can change that setting in this menu. Um, you can select that you're using a twin needle, um, which if you do so with twin needles on a Viking sewing machine, I would recommend going in and playing with that setting. The cool thing is, here I'll show you. So if we go and say we're gonna use a three millimeter twin needle and we tell it that we're gonna use a three millimeter twin needle, you notice what it shows you on the screen? It shows you two rows of stitching side by side. Now what it's going to do for us is it's going to allow us now to put a twin needle in and play with some of our other stitches that the machine has. Where normally you put a twin needle in and, and you're afraid to play with the other stitches because if the needle's moving side to side you're going to break a needle. Well this knows how far it can move side by side and so it just limits the stitches to let all of that happen. It's, uh, it's, it's pretty cool. So again, if you're using a twin needle, definitely recommend going in there and playing with that twin needle setting, but we're gonna go ahead and turn it off. Stitch with safety is if you had a straight stitch plate or foot on, you can turn that on, which is going to limit the stitch width that the machine does. Um, let me just check something here really fast. Oh yeah. The cool thing about this particular model is what I had to check, is that anytime you attach a straight stitch plate to the machine, which is a plate you can't zigzag with. It's just a single tiny little hole plate. The machine knows and it limits the stitch width. So it'll make it only straight stitch. Doesn't matter what you play with. It knows it has a straight stitch plate. There's a sensor built into the machine. It's a great feature. Um, automatic thread cutter, presser foot lift, fix auto. Those are all things that you can customize. Your Some of your stitch settings you can play with there. The language of the machine. Um, screen lock, all of those you can play. So all of that is located in that little tools menu there. So um, you can kind of customize the machine to your exact preferences. Another thing I want to show you that I absolutely love, one of my favorites, I wish, I wish every brand of machine had this, um, but I'm glad that Viking does, is a little help button right here. What this help button will do is that if you touch the help button, and you touch anything on the screen, it'll tell you exactly what that is used for. So if we touch help and we wanna know what, what is that for, you can touch that and it tells you exactly what that is for. Even um, if we're on sewing stitches and you want some information about a sewing stitch, you can touch a sewing stitch and it tells you what that stitch is used for. The help button, the question button, it's great. It's it's really, really nice. On uh, some machines that we have in the store, uh, some embroidery models that don't have that, uh, it's hard to figure out information sometimes if you don't know what an icon does. You have to take out the book and flip through it. And But on Viking, you don't, you just touch that, touch the icon and great, tells you exactly what it does. Um, but yeah, great, great feature. Um, over here, we also have our file folder, which will take us to our heart menu, um, which I'll show you a little bit more about. Our trash can is for when we're programming, it'll trash can stitches. Um, these guys right here are mirror image. So mirror image this way, or mirror image this way. And you can see it change on the screen, so you're flip-flopping the stitch in different directions. So yeah, mirror image there. Um, something I didn't realize either. 
too, which is kind of cool. Um, you can scroll through your stitching here. So if you want to go page by page by page by page by page, you can do that there. Let's talk a little bit um, about a, our sewing advisor at the bottom of the screen, which I just touched. Um, the sewing advisor is where you tell the machine what kind of fabric that you're sewing on, and the machine's going to do some changes based on that fabric. So we have woven light here, woven medium, woven heavy, stretch, light, medium heavy, and leather and vinyl. And you can see the the little description changing on the front of the machine. So you'll also notice too that as I'm touching these, the stitch is constantly changing. It's because the machine knows how to adjust itself based on the fabric that you have selection. So selected. So it's a really it's a it's a great useful tool in sewing. Now the lower part of the sewing advisor is what you might want to do. So a lot of times this is used in like garment construction. So let's say you had to seam an overcast, which is kind of the stitch I'm already on, and you needed to seam an overcast on a woven piece of light fabric. Well, the machine's gonna pick the stitch for you. It's gonna pick the foot, your J foot, that comes with the machine. It's going to pick and set up the stitch. It's going to recommend a 70 needle. It's gonna have self-adjusted the tensions for you. Everything is perfect now to do seam and overcast on a piece of woven light material. Now, let's say you needed to seam and overcast on a stretch light material. Well, it's adjusted itself. It's telling you that now it needs a 75 stretch needle. It's changed the stitch slightly. Same foot recommended. Tension settings are set for that. So everything got tweaked and changed, even though you're doing the same thing, but you're doing it on a different kind of fabric. So it's great. So we have down here on our bottom of our sewing advisor, our sewing techniques, we have um, setting a seam. And you'll notice too, the set a seam, it's not just a straight stitch. It's a straight stitch when you're on woven light or medium, but when you're on stretch fabrics, it's this little lightning bolt stitch. So we've got setting a seam, we've got just overcasting, seam and overcast, we've got our basting stitches there, our blind hem, and our stretch material blind hem there. We've got our buttonhole stitch there. And again, the buttonhole changes too, depending on the kind of fabric that you're on. So that's how the sewing advisor work. It works. It's one of Viking's um, longtime exclusive features for their sewing machine. Okay, now I'm going to show you programming. Programming is where we take two different stitches and we combine them together. So first we're going to go to our little sapphire crystal there, and we're going to go to the programming button, the one that says PROG. This will take us into our programming screen, and you'll notice the screen is blank because we have not selected a stitch that we want to program with. So then we can go to our stitch menu, and let's go grab some decorative stitches here. So let's see what we want to work with. Um, we can do the car and trailer. Those go together well. So we pick the little car, and then we can stick a little trailer with it. So now, if we start to sew this out, it will do it as a continual border of a car and trailer. So if you're gonna put this on like a little kid's quilt or, or something, and it'll look really cute. So I'll show you what it looks like here in just one second. So that's the little car and trailer put together there. So now we can use programming to put together any sequence of stitches. Um, so we'll go back here to the programming screen. And then if you wanted to delete something that you've worked on, um, if you wanted, let's say we made a mistake and we accidentally hit this button. Now we got that star on the screen. We don't want it. So then you hit your trash can button, which will remove just that star. But if you notice the trash can button has a little triangle in the corner, which means if you hold it down, there's another option there. So if we hold it down, it'll ask us if we want to delete everything from our screen. And then we can start over with a fresh canvas. So you can put any combination of stitches together, whatever you feel like that works together. If you like, say, this stitch, but you want it to face the other direction in relation to that stitch, then you just use your mirror image buttons. And you can flip-flop that around when you're programming to get exactly the look that you want. 
Okay, so now let's do some names, some alphabets. They're very similar to programming. Um, it's done actually in program mode, even though that's not how you get to it. How you get to your sewing, your alphabets, is we're gonna touch our little crystal there, and we're gonna go to our alphabet button. Now we've got a few different choices on alphabet. Um, we've got our block, our brush line alphabet, and our script alphabet. Um, and then we've got a few different uh, languages in there. So let's go, let's do the brush line. Those are kind of cute. So when you select that on the screen, it's going to come up like a typewriter. It's very easy and you can write whatever you want. You can write a whole sentence if you want. If you want to make a quilt label, you can say made with love for so and so. Um, but in this case, I'm just going to do my name. Very simple. So touch J and you can see the J on the screen. Now, if I want to do lowercase, I can do lowercase. So John, right? Um, easy. If I wanted to say stick a sewing stitch in there, maybe I wanted to go find something cute to put with my name. I can go toggle over to my sewing stitches and let's find, oh, you know what? Right there. That's the one I want. I can stick a little heart with it. And if I wanted to continue to write something, I can write um, John Hart, uh, maybe Viking. Now, I have a couple different options. I can do this as a continual border where it'll say John Hart Viking over and over and over and over again. Or if I'm doing a label, I'm writing a sentence, I can have it just do John Hart Viking. And then I can either touch my stop button or my cut button on my front pad to the left of the machine. And that'll either program in a stop or it'll program in a cut. In which case, I want to program in a cut. So I'm going to hit my automatic scissor button and you'll see that pop up on the screen. See that right there? So now I'm ready to stitch out my John Hart Viking. One thing I appreciate too is you'll notice as it sews, it shows you where you are in the sequence. The letters start to go by as you sew them on the screen. So when it gets to this point, right there where the scissor is, it's going to stop and cut automatically. There we go. So we get our John Hart Viking. Um, so now let's say I worked really hard on this and I really like this little name that I worked with or I use this a lot for like quilt labels or whatever. Um, I can save this permanently into the machine or permanently until I want it gone. So the way that I do this is I have my little arrow to my file folder here. When I select that, it'll take me to my heart menu and then I can select an empty spot and then that name will be put into that location or whatever I worked on, any, any stitch, for me to be able to go back to later on. And how I get to that is I'll show you. So let's just take this off and go back to a regular straight stitch. So if I go to my stitches, there's my little heart menu, which is my U menu, and there is what I had saved into it. Now the neat thing with that heart menu is I can use it for all kinds of things. So let's say I made my own custom little scant quarter inch. So I move my foot over and this is exactly where I think my quarter inch should be to the edge of my regular sewing foot and I like it to be 3.5 or however I customize my stitch. I can save that too into my heart menu. So there, there's my custom stitch that I tweaked. This is how I like my stitch to be. Um, and instead of having to tweak it every time I turn the machine on, there it is. Already there, tweaked, uh, ready to go. So the heart menu is a really cool feature to use. Now I want to show you a few of the different sewing features on the machine. Let's start by showing you how easy it is to do free motion quilting with your Viking Sapphire. 
To do free motion quilting, the first thing we want to do is select our free motion icon right on our touch screen. Then a little box will pop up asking you which foot you would like to use for free motion quilting. The one that comes with the machine is the free motion floating foot, which is the small little R foot that just pops onto the machine. Or you can use the spring free motion foot, which is the larger screw on style free motion foot. So you have to let the machine know which foot you intend to use. So in this case, we're going to use the one that comes with the machine, which is the free motion floating. So you might have heard a little thud. That is the machine is lower, has lowered the feed teeth automatic. So you do not have to hit a lever. When you select that icon that you want a free motion, the feed dogs drop automatically. The entire machine is now set for free motion. Now all I have to do is pop on my free motion foot and I am ready to go. The R free motion foot or the floating free motion foot, it just hovers slightly above the fabric when you're doing your free motion. I prefer this foot. There's no resistance on the fabric when you're moving it. The spring style that you screw onto the machine, it constantly bounces up and down, up and down, up and down when you're doing your free motion. Um, it could give a beginner maybe a little bit uh, more support because it's going to hold the fabric down every time it stitches. So the quality of the free motion, this is the back side, that's the front side, uh, perfectly balanced stitches, machine free motions wonderfully. Now I'm going to show you uh, a little optional part that you could get for your machine that I'm quite fond of. It's Viking's quilting table. The quilting table is really a wonderful addition to the Sapphire machine. You take off your accessory box that holds all of your feet and then you can slide on their quilting table. Now the nice thing with this quilting table is that it does slide onto your machine like your accessory box does so there is no feet to this. So you could still work with a round piece of fabric if you needed to, like a pillowcase. Um, it's nice because it matches the look of the machine and it actually mat matches the contour of the machine. So it has a slight slant in the front. Another nice feature on this table is that it has this adjustable guide. So when you're doing your quilting or you're doing a seam, you can put this either to the left or the right so that you can guide your fabric by that piece. This can also be removed if it's in your way, it just slides off the end. Uh, so this is a wonderful addition to your sapphire machine. So I'm going to show you something else you can do um, in free motion. So this is your standard free motion stippling stitch where you just kind of meander. Um, but sometimes people do uh, monogramming using free motion techniques. And so to do that it's simple. We select that we want to zigzag instead of doing a straight stitch on our screen. So now I have a zigzag selected. Um, I can set it to whatever length or width I want, but I'm going to leave it right where it's at. Now if I want to use a zigzag in free motion, I can do monograms.
So I made my name. So it's simple. So different things you can play around with in free motion mode. Also when you're free motioning on your sapphire, um, you may decide to not use your foot control. You may decide to use your start stop button. Um, this might help you to regulate your stitch better. So you can use the speed plus and minus to set the speed of the machine wherever you feel the most comfortable. And instead of using your foot control then, you can use your start button. So this is going to make the machine run at a very consistent speed. So as long as you move your fabric consistently, your stitch lengths will be perfect. And then the, again, the nice thing is all I had to do is tap my foot control with my foot and my foot control took back over stopping the machine. Notice I did not have to reach back up and hit the stop button. Okay, so to turn off free motion, very simple. We touch our free motion icon and uncheck the box. The feed teeth have been re-engaged and the only thing we have to do is snap back on our regular foot. So it's very easy to transition from free motion to regular sewing. So now I want to show you another little stitch that I like that's kind of a hidden stitch in the machine. If you see it in the menu, you may not know what it's used for, or if, even if you try to use it, you may not understand how this stitch works. So let me show you. It's in your first menu, or your A menu, where all your utility stitches are. It's stitch number six, which on the screen, just looks like a little dot. And even here, once you select it, it still just looks like a little dot. What this stitch is, it is our, one of our basting stitches. We actually have two basting stitches. Um, we have a more traditional basting stitch, which is number four, which just sets the machine to a really long stitch length. But number six is, is kind of my preferred basting stitch because it's kind of like you hand basted it. Um, I call it your free motion basting stitch because how it's going to work here is every time you hit the foot control, the machine will do a stitch, raise the foot, release the tension on the thread so that you can slide to any length based you want. And then you just continue to hit the foot control. So I can baste an inch or I can baste a foot. It all depends on how much I move the fabric through by hand. So can you see the basting stitch on there? And the nice thing with this basting stitch is it really is a basting stitch. It's temporary. The tensions have been adjusted in a way where you can easily remove this without having to cut out any stitches or to fool around with anything. Um, it's really a, kind of a neat way to do your, your basting stitch. Because what, you, what kind of makes me nuts is when you have the built-in basting stitch, you end up with way more stitches than you actually need for your baste. So this way, using number six, your free motion basting stitch, you can determine how many stitches you want on your baste. Okay, so now let's play around with our Omnimotion stitches. Omnimotion stitches are these really cool stitches built into the machine where the fabric feeds both front to back but also left and right to do these larger patterns. Um, our Omnimotion menu is going to be menu G within our machine, but we'll find it by going to our stitch icon and just holding that down. Uh, our menu pops up. We'll select menu G, which is our larger pattern stitches. And we'll find a couple fun ones to play around with here. There's quite a few different ones to choose from. Um, you know, this is just kind of a, a standard one, um, easy to do. Um, you'll notice that the stitch is really wide on the screen, and it's also recommending that we use our S foot. That is our side motion foot. So we're going to pop off our A foot. We'll put on our S foot.
and I'm just going to go ahead and use my start stop button. And you'll notice when it's doing this stitch, notice how the fabric's moving left to right. It's moving in all directions. Okay, see what we made? So much wider, your traditional sewing stitch would be very narrow and couldn't do this kind of pattern. Um, but yeah, so the Omni Motion stitches are, are really fun to play with. So our Omni Motion menu again is, is menu G, but you'll find scattered throughout the other menus uh, a few Omni Motion stitches kind of mixed in. Uh, one in particular is a free motion one. See if we can find it here. So we'll go to our quilting menu, which is menu D, and we'll keep scrolling through that menu until we find our quilting stippling stitch right there. So this is nice for someone who's maybe not that good with their free motion technique, uh, but they want to be able to do some stippling on their quilt. It's a great looking built-in stippling stitch. Now a lot of machines have a built-in stippling stitch, but they don't do side to side and it's really small um, and doesn't look like a natural free motion stitch. Where this one actually does a really good job mimicking what somebody might do with their free motion by hand. See that? And that's another stitch that it's going to slightly move the fabric side to side as it's going back and forth also. So again, you'll find a few of those stitches also scattered out throughout the machine. And you'll know, uh, it's really easy to identify them, they're really big on the screen. But also, um, anytime the S foot pops up, that means it's going to try to jog that fabric left to right to do those stitches. So there's one button on the machine that we have not talked about yet. And then th this is the little button that says A A L T, excuse me. Um, it's alt or alternative. So I'll explain because it does a few different things um, depending on what stitch you are on. Um, it's easy to see what alt does on a satin stitch when you have a satin stitch selected. Our satin, a lot of our satin stitches are found in menu B. So we'll find one, let's see which one do I want to play with here, that kind of has a nice repeating pattern, um, so maybe 13. Okay, so you can see 13 is this little tiny satin stitch on the screen, and if we wanted to adjust it, you know, we can play with our um, width settings, and we can play with our length settings, and you'll see that they change on the screen. Now, kind of the cool thing with um, the way that Viking has their satin stitches set up is that when you adjust the length, it doesn't change the density of the stitch. So even though you're making it longer, you're, you're elongating the pattern, but you're not changing the fact that you want to do a satin stitch. Where on other machines, when you make the satin stitch longer, it's no longer a satin stitch. It just spread out the stitches. But on, on Viking, it's going to elongate the pattern, but still keep it a nice, tight satin stitch. But let's say you wanted to spread those stitches apart. Let's say you're working with a nice fat thread, maybe a 30 weight embroidery thread instead of your normal 40 weight, something a little fatter. And the satin stitching is too close together for that fat thread, so you want to tweak it a little bit. That's where your Alt button comes in. So when you touch the Alt button, 
you'll notice these two icons have changed. So this is where they are normally and they change now to stitch length. So our stitch length is currently 0.4 which is a normal stitch length for a satin stitch. So if you wanted to spread those stitches apart you can start to tweak the density of the stitch or if you want to make them even more dense. And the nice thing too that I really really love about Viking is that everything that you see going on on the screen is what you expect to get when you sew. So when you make the stitch length longer, you can see the stitching spread apart on the screen. When you make the stitch length smaller, you can see the stitch length getting smaller on the screen. So that's one of the, the features of the Alt button. So when you're doing a satin stitch, again, you can change the length of the pattern. Or if you touch Alt, you can change the stitch density there. Okay, so another feature of the Alt button um, is stitch positioning. So when you're, when you're doing a regular straight stitch on this machine, or on Vikings, you know you have the ability to move the needle from left to right. You can put, for straight stitching, you can put your needle wherever you want, right? And a lot of machines give you that ability um, to move the needle all around to different positions. What Viking has begun to do is to give you the ability to reposition any stitch that the machine does. So I'll, I'll explain. Um, let's go find a nice little applique stitch. Um, so applique stitch will be in our quilting menu. Menu D, so we got that little pin applique stitch. And it's showing you where it's going to start sewing in relation to the stitch foot. So right kind of in the middle of the, of the foot is where that's going to start sewing. But let's say you have your open toe foot on and you want to move that stitch to a different location. You want it to stitch from the left side of the foot or the right side of the foot. Well if you touch your Alt button, I can now reposition that stitch without altering the stitch. So I'm not making the stitch wider, I'm not making the stitch longer, I'm just changing the position that that stitch is going to stitch under my presser foot. So instead of this straight line part of the stitch being lined up right in the middle of the foot, I have now moved it to the edge of my foot because on this particular stitch, I can gauge it better for my applique moving it over. Or whatever your preference is, you can tweak your stitches that way. So you can dial everything in 100% perfect just the way that you want it to be um, on your Viking sewing machine. So that is what the Alt button is for. And again, if you're ever kind of lost and you forget what a button is, um, don't forget to go to your little question mark. You can touch the Alt and it'll give you some explanation on what that is that might help jog your memory to get you back on track. Okay now so let's talk about buttonholes. Um, buttonholes are very easy on Viking. They have very nice looking buttonholes. Um, things that I like about Viking's buttonholes is it measures the size of the button for you or the length and makes sure it repeats it perfectly for you every time. Both sides of the um, buttonhole are fed in the same direction which gives you a more professional looking buttonhole and you also have the use of your exclusive sewing advisor down here at the bottom so when you tell it the kind of fabric you're going to do the buttonhole on it's going to better set things up for you to do um, a perfect buttonhole. So let's let's use our um, our sewing advisor to do our buttonhole. So we'll pick that we're on woven medium fabric and we'll touch our little buttonhole stitch and so the machine has selected that on woven fabric this is the correct style buttonhole to do. So again if we were on different kinds of fabric you'll see um, the, that it's going to select different kinds of buttonholes. But we're on woven medium so just your standard rectangular normal buttonhole. So this right here is Viking's buttonhole foot that comes with the machine. It's a buttonhole tracker foot. It's got this little red wheel that's going to roll on your fabric and measure the buttonhole to do a perfect buttonhole. You'll notice on the wheel, the wheel is mostly red but there's a little white area. That white area lines up with that white line. That is where you start. You should always start your buttonhole somewhere within that white area. Now you'll notice on the buttonhole foot 
it looks like a little headphone jack that's going to plug into the machine right here right kind of next to the needle threader arm and you can feel it with your finger so we pop off our foot this one's going to just pop right on we take our headphone jack and we plug it right into the machine make sure too that you have it plugged in all the way if for any reason you don't plug it in all the way um, you're not going to get a very nice buttonhole So now back to the screen. So on the screen, now that we have our buttonhole foot plugged in, it shows us a buttonhole length on the screen of 14. That's 14 millimeters. Um, you can make the length whatever you like and you'll see that the buttonhole changes on the screen. So this right now is a 14 millimeter buttonhole. So if you needed to hold your button against the screen, you could gauge it that way. There's also a millimeter ruler on the bottom of the machine you can hold a button against to see what size you need for your, your button. So you can adjust that to whatever size matches your button. Um, and then we just start sewing. So I'm gonna go ahead and use our start stop button. So you notice both columns being fed in the same direction and also because the machine has electronically controlled tensions, the tensions have been adjusted already for the buttonhole stitch so you don't have to do anything. And we get our perfectly balanced buttonhole. Now this buttonhole is repeatable without any adjusting at all. So just make sure you start in the white spot there and it'll do that exact same buttonhole as many times as you need. Notice too, when the buttonhole finishes, the machine is going to tie a knot so it's going to tie off the thread, it's going to cut, and it's going to raise the foot for you all automatically. You don't have to do or touch anything, and you get another perfect buttonhole. So there may be times that you're doing a buttonhole, and maybe the buttonhole tracker foot isn't the best match for what you're working with. So for instance, if you're trying to do a buttonhole and you're on the very edge of a piece of fabric and that wheel's not going to be able to roll on the fabric or you're in a really tight corner and that wheel's just not going to be able to roll then you can do a manual buttonhole. So to do a manual buttonhole you just pop off your tracker foot and you're going to put on your standard buttonhole foot which is your C foot. Looks a lot like the tracker foot just without the wheel on the side. So we pop this onto the machine. So now what's gonna happen with this foot is that instead of the machine measuring the size of the buttonhole for you, um, you determine the size and you'll see how this is done. Um, also, both columns are not gonna be fed in the same direction like when you're using the tracker foot. So one column will feed up and one will feed down. Um, the reason why you want both columns to feed in the same direction for the most part is it gives you a better looking buttonhole. So you see there will be a slight difference between the two columns being fed in two different directions. So to do a manual buttonhole, it's easy. You start sewing and it's going to sew up one column. When you get the length that you want, then you touch the reverse button which tells the machine you are ready to bar tack the top and start coming back forward. When your two columns have lined back up, touch the reverse and finish your buttonhole. And there's your manual buttonhole stitch on your Viking. 
Well, I hope you have enjoyed the lesson on the Sapphire 960Q. Um, this has been a very popular machine with us. It's, it's one of our, our favorite machines in the Viking line. We've sold a lot of them and have r had really great feedback from our customers. They really, really enjoy sewing with this machine. Uh, it's a wonderful machine, especially at the price point. I don't put the price out on, on the internet for everybody, but uh, it's a great price. It's a great value. There's uh, We sell a lot of different lines of machines in the store, and there's really nothing in that price point that... Um, it, that does everything that this machine does. It's an awesome machine. Um, another little thing that I didn't talk about um, was the fact that it has a USB port on the side of the machine. Um, it's not an embroidery machine, so you might wonder, you know, why does it have a USB port on the side? It's because this machine is updatable. So when Viking comes out with software updates, you can update it through the USB port. Also, there's a little bit more to it than that, too. Um, there was some feedback from customers, uh, for instance, on a couple stitches because they had some previous model Vikings and that had a couple stitches that they, they really liked to use. Um, and they found that those stitches weren't on this model. And this model has hundreds of stitches and how could you know this, this stitch that's important to me not be here? So Viking took the feedback from the people um, and put the stitches online to, that you could import into the machine through the USB port. So to have the USB port on the side of the machine um, is really, uh, it's really a nice feature. It really is. Updates, I think, and I work the service department also, um, updates are just really important. It really helps the machine to stay current and, and really run the best with uh, with the little adjustments that they do in Sweden. So, um, a wonderful machine, and so I hope you enjoyed the class. Um, take care.